All right, welcome again to Spirituality, the Second Half of Life. This is episode three. And uh, the first one is, what is it? And I explained my little chart here. When does it begin? Uh, I kind of walked through uh, some of the crisis that creates pain uh, during the age of Vokari, our age of our vocation. And uh, now let's talk about some of the characteristics of, of what begins to happen in us um, internally that, uh, that it lets us know we're kind of there. So let me start by just sharing a couple stages of my own journey that I think have been leading me to see this uh, or be able to recognize it. First was when I was 20. Uh, my mom died of a brain aneurysm very suddenly. So that trauma and crisis has been a framing story for me uh, to, uh, to this day. And today I'm 24. So it, you know, it's been, it's been had of this big shadow effect for now 40 years. Um, at age 40, uh, my wife and I were, uh, hit a, 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 a bump is a, a nice way to say it, but it was really me dealing with, uh, not growing up out of my, uh, young adult, teenage self, and, and it created a crisis um, for me. It created a vocational crisis, and then it also created uh, a, a marital crisis that we shifted through, but uh, I, I was not aware that this was coming or uh, really, I didn't feel like it, I dealt with it real well up until then. Um, and then at age 50, I came and took a church that I thought was like the pinnacle of my vocari, that in my profession, uh, becoming a senior pastor of a, of a congregation is kind of like becoming the CEO of a small business. And uh, the, the reality was that uh, church ended and I closed it eventually after a number of years. And so in, in this time of my 40s and 50s, uh, my identity uh, was put to trial. Uh, how I understood the world was put to trial. Um, how I navigated through those difficulties um, was, was, was put to, to the test. And, and what happens, I think, during these transitional phases in this in the transition between the first half of life and the second half of, of life is that um, it, it really raises some questions. Uh, and the questions um, are deep questions. They, I've written a few down that I'll just kind of read from. Uh, why is my life not turned out the way I thought it would? So I've been working all this time thinking that, okay, this is going to be the pinnacle of my, my work and my calling. And it, it, it becomes a disaster uh, and, and becomes an incredibly painful crisis for, for us financially, for us personally, for our, our children. Um, we risked a lot and we paid a lot uh, for that. And the, and the deep question was, what did I get wrong? Um, wh why isn't this working out the way I thought it would? Um, Others may not have that kind of crisis, but the, it, it becomes a crisis because there's relational pain or death and, and there's a, a lack of blessing from parents or, or there's a sense of, hey, I've been, I'm doing all this. In fact, I, I have reached the pinnacle and I've talked to CEOs who are uh, at the top of their game, making millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars who are unfulfilled and trying to find What's my real purpose? Is this all there is? Am I, am I gonna just keep buying more boats and more houses for the next 30 or 40 years? Is, is this it? There's gotta be more to this than that. And so they're kind of these existential questions. Um, the, the pain can be very disorienting. And, and, and honestly, as one who's been a pastor in, in this world, we don't do a good job uh, generally acknowledging and being honest about the reality of pain. We don't like pain. Go to any evangelical church's funeral 
and watch people try to dodge the bullet of lament and in grief and pain. We, we jump real quickly to the hope of eternal life, which is great. Hope, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, but we, we ignore, uh, and I would say even deny the reality of the deep uh, pain that, that people are experiencing or that I'm experiencing. Um, and, and, and we begin to question, this is where the spirituality of the second half of life really comes in, is we can start to question um, the, the plan I've been following uh, has been intended to avoid this. And so it, where's God in this? Where's God in this game? And I know I've got verses that I've learned in these or ideas that I've learned in this first half of my life, but they're, they're not working right now. They're not working. Uh, they seem trite. I know they're true, but they feel trite. And they're not answering uh, this deeper sense of, of who I am. And this is where we hit this wall. And uh, th this is where Rohr says the church is really designed for first half of life spirituality. And we give first half of life answers for second half of life questions. Tracking with me there? There's, so there's second half of life questions and they're not answered by first half of life answers completely the way they used to and and we can go back there and, and this can create actual bitterness in people and uh frustration people check out at this point um so there's a there's a phrase in in the church world where we we talk about the nuns and the duns the duns are the people who say i'm done with church I'm done with this. And they generally are people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s saying, hey, I've done this, and I'm not doing this anymore because it's not working. I'm going to go walk on a walk on Sunday morning. I'm going to go do something else because this, this circle of answering my deep questions with these answers isn't working. Um, and no one's providing an answer for this. No one's even acknowledging the pain um, that's there. And in my quest, and I, again, I'm, I'm setting you up and I'm, I want to set you up that I don't have all the answers. Uh, I'm still discovering this. But there, there, there is something that needs, there's some different framework of spirituality that uh, we need to develop and figure out. I'll end with a story of another friend of mine who went through divorce right in this area, but, you know, late forties. And as he started to go back to one of the largest churches in, in uh, Texas, um, it, and it's a good church, no stones to throw. After a while, he, he expressed frustration with what he was experiencing or not experiencing there. And I asked him, do you think that someone on this, on, at, at the pulpit or on the platform, are they aware of the pain that you've experienced? Are they signaling to you through their communication, through the stories they're telling that they know you're out here uh, living in this deep well of brokenness uh, and trying to understand, does God hate you? Have you totally blown it? Why I've been trying to do all the right things and now this is what I've got. Do they even know? He says, no, no. They don't know I exist, not just personally, but that his world, that his experience was, isn't part of this discussion over here uh, in the church because we're dealing with it uh, still in the age of discovery, uh, not in the age of becoming a true elder. And that's what this pain helps us become, true elders. And we'll start talking about that the next time.